Rogers TV. The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Tobin Tonight, the podcast slash TV show where we have conversations with celebrities, ones that you may know and some that you don't know, but eventually you should know. Hopefully. Uh, this week we have Megan Hutchins on. Uh, Megan's going to talk about her acting career, how she got into acting over sports. She's going to talk about some yoga, trying to convince me to get into yoga, see if that's successful. And of course, animal rights. Because if you go on her Instagram, she's big into animal rights. And she actually has a dog that I call the wheelchair dog. I don't know if that's correct terminology. Don't cancel me. Um, but I guess something was wrong with its um, with its back and needed a little bit of support. Anyway, tune into the episode, which is going to be on right now, because that's what I'm doing. I'm doing an intro. So cue the music. through watching Hudson and Rex, which mm -hmm. is kind of big down here in Newfoundland. But I'm going to say the, the episode you were on in particular, um, like I, I'll watch it every now and again. But then when I realized what your last name was, I was like, man, how did she not get the role? It could have been called Hutchings and Rex. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> yeah, they, they just be like, but, but we have John, John Reardon is from Nova Scotia and East Coast. Yeah, but like the name yeah. is in the title. It writes itself. You don't even have to change your name. And they're like, yeah, that's okay. We, we figured it out. But yeah, I did I think like people the probably like John better than me, though. So <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's fair. I mean, <laughs> they each their own, right? Like, there are some yeah. people that are like, I feel like because of the world we live in, they're like, hey, uh, a woman can do that job too. It's like, okay, no one said she couldn't. It's yeah. just that yeah. John showed up and we were like, great for John. But the episode that I like that you were in, uh, I see the, the clip all the time of like, the investigative scene and this is where i kind of wanted to start the podcast with you is do they tell you the outfits to wear or did you just show up one day and you're just like man this this is definitely what i'm going to wear to like a bridal shower or like you know having your friends around because i was just like man that's a that's a good outfit for like a guy to come up and be like i know she's the bride but you what's your situation <laughs> <laughs> we I get no say in uh I remember when they gave me the crop top and I and I was like um they're like do you have any preferences of like what you've tried on and I was like maybe just not the crop top and then usually the way it goes is like the thing you're like I'm not comfortable and that is what they end up choosing and that's what happens so yeah yeah, yeah. no no I did not bring my own clothes they were given to me <laughs> okay because I, I was yeah. just like man that scene just like you know I, I guess it's if you can sort it out or you have the figure for it it works because the amount of times that I'm like watching that scene, I'm like, man, I wonder did she pick out that outfit? Because if she did, stellar. If she didn't, I'm kind of like, no. good job. But now knowing this backstory, I'm a little bit concerned. We're just like, just throw it on. <laughs> it's all it's all wardrobe. I mean, had I been like, hey, I'm really uncomfortable in this, then they, I'm they sure they would have been accommodating because everybody on that set is so the entire yeah. crew and like wardrobe, hair, makeup, everyone's so 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 lovely. So yeah. I'm I can, sure imagine, they I can like, imagine if they tried to tell John, like, okay, so I know most times you're like in a shirt and tie or a suit. Um, we looked at the demographic. It's a lot of young ladies. Yeah, they were he's got to get the shirt off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he probably like, no, I'm not doing that. They'd be like, all right, well, I guess yeah. uh, do we still have Hutchings and Rex ready? To go? <laughs> I know there's different roles that you play throughout different series, and we can kind of get into that. But like, where did you get? the acting bug to because i know from a young age i like doing this stuff like just having conversations with people and i like broadcasting i dabbled in maybe doing like an acting class or course when you were a smart kid in school and they were like all right get out of school for like a few days and just choose a path and i was like yeah acting and then i have a right. vhs tape of like the don't do drugs thing that they made us do I'm really like, yeah i'm like I was not really interested in acting. I was more <laughs> interested in being on camera and being like, give me no script. I'm going, just saying what I want to say. They're like, that's not how this works. I'm like, no, no it's not no. acting. Oh, okay. So then, and then you found yourself here. 
yeah exactly this is, yeah. this is how i just yeah. end up here where no one controls me at all i can just say <laughs> things and then well someone i guess essentially will say no don't say that but i that's what i thought acting was was a kid i was just like man they just find these people out on the street and they're just like all right put a camera on them and roll and i guess in a way that's tiktok today but yeah or back, improv, back, with improv yeah, actors. Yeah, yeah there you go but back in the day i was just like that's definitely how this is done and then they were like here's your lines do this i was like oh oh that's yeah. acting okay yeah but tell me how you got like the whole bogger into it uh hmm i think um it was probably high school i i went into drama class so i, I was a good student i played a lot of sports um but i always felt like a bit uh like nothing really made sense and then i remember being in drama class and like you know people are like oh like screaming and like just I'm like oh okay i think this makes sense so um <laughs> these all these people are the weird as i am um so that's how and then i just did a play in high school and then kind of just went from there you mentioned other like sports that you were involved in like was it just not one of the things that like i guess my my follow up would be what sports were you in and then why didn't that kind of go down that road? Because I know I tried basketball because I'm Canadian and was no good at hockey. And I feel like okay. instantly I'm just ousted. Like, you know, like yeah. if you're not a Canadian kid that plays hockey, yeah. the next best thing is basketball. At least yeah. girls or your fellas will show up and watch you play. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Or so, football. Football. Or, yeah. Fo football is mm -hmm. more mainland, I call it. Like okay. Ontario, okay. Ontario, BC. Because okay. I mean, we, we don't have a CFL team in Newfoundland. You don't have no. much in Newfoundland. So it's like, how do you, how do you go to entertain a 10 year old? That, like that could be you one day. It's like, how yeah. am I playing? <laughs> and basketball yeah. is a fun game too. So basketball is easy to just like pick up a ball and yeah. practice. And then yeah. if you suck, you immediately go, okay, this only cost me $20 for shorts. Yeah. And a basketball. <laughs> yeah. Hockey is expensive too. When kids yeah. get into you rap, like in hockey, your parents just like, yeah hold that against you for life for sure <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah but the like, hockey what, parents are crazy yeah. like what sports were you into um so i played in high school i played i played basketball i was point guard and okay. then i played setter for volleyball and then i played um i played competitive volleyball and tennis growing up so okay. and uh why did it never pan out um honestly i think just i was well, I didn't go, I didn't go to college or university after, so I didn't have a, a team to okay. follow up with. Yeah. Um, and I think tennis was the pressure, a solo sport, a solo sport I really struggled with because when I lost, it was all my fault, at least as a team, you can be like, kind of share the misery and, you know, yeah. Yeah. tennis, so I was like, you can slam and racket. Oh yeah. And, um, just hating. Yeah. So I don't know. I guess I just transitioned out of it when I found, I guess when I found acting. Yeah. yeah. Cause I, I, I went like... to school for um, a semester of psychology and then I, and then I booked a feature and I kind of had to choose which route to go. So. I like looking at like the interesting part of, I guess, conversations with people is you get to know a little bit more about them. And I mean, I don't want this to come across like as mean or insulting, but like I go on your Instagram and I see more like animal rights stuff and like, hey here's a dog and i don't know the proper term for it but like you know they don't got their their i call it like a wheelchair dog because he has wheels yeah. but yeah. i was just like man this seems way more interesting to me than if you just had to post like hey i'm in a hallmark movie check it out i'd be like okay so it was like britney bristow so it was like yeah. five six other actors that are always just swapping partners but like yeah. the the animal stuff like tell me kind of how that came about because I think some of the posts, when I look at it, it's very detailed. It's very in-depth. It's like very like, I am very furious at this, but I'm going to kind of keep it composed, but you can mm -hmm. kind of tell the passion of it. So where did that instill from? Like, did you once upon a time have a puppy that like <laughs> lost legs and needed legs? Or were you just like in a household and you're like, man, my neighbor beats its cat up and I don't like that. <laughs> like, you know, tell me where it comes from. <laughs> Uh, where did it come from? Uh, well, both my parents growing up were very much um, animal lovers and, and caretakers. So they would come home constantly with stray or injured animals. So I think from them, I learned that like, you don't just walk past something that's hurting on the street. Um, and then I also, I'm an only child. And uh, I think 
I think most people in the rescue world have some like attachment wounds and trauma that maybe they haven't dealt with. And so the, their heart goes elsewhere from other people I've spoken to in this world. Uh, so I think just spending a lot of time alone as a child, like I just had a, I had a, a lot of love for the cats and dogs that were around and I still do. So, uh, and then I've always, it, it's definitely gotten more, you know, intense and ingrained in me as I've gotten older as I just like, when I was in Newfoundland, like the amount of birds I found injured <laughs> and there's a lovely woman who owns a rescue there who takes yeah. them all, but like. Uh, they just uh, the animals just find me now and like I I just I'm not gonna walk past something that's suffering on the street like and uh there's just so many dogs and cats and horses and everything that just are suffering that I just I don't believe in paying someone to yeah. to uh bring another animal into the world and and often I mean these people aren't doing they're not breeding under uh humane circumstances in any way so uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's just something I'm super passionate about. And I've always said, like, if I ever had, you know, more of a platform, I, I just want to work and I love acting and I hope that I get to tell really good stories. But I would also love to have that platform to, like, make a difference in the world when it comes to the lives of animals. So tell me, like, because I, I know there's an audience out there that would enjoy this kind of side of the story. But, like, tell me a little bit about your dog, because, you know, if you go on Instagram, you see the dog. So, I mean, I just call mm. the dog. I don't know the name, but, like, you know. Why, why was the situation like the, to it lose its legs before you had it? Uh, like, is that what you adopted it for? Or like during the process, did it lose its legs? Cause I feel like either way, it's fine. No one's going to be here. Like, how dare you? <laughs> like, but a little bit of the backstory. Cause I think it's interesting. Cause like, I know there's a lot of people out there that would say, Oh, I would totally take a blind cat or I would totally right. take a dog that, you know, uh, barks all the time or is scared. And, there you go. On cue. Henry, uh, no. But like no. but then but then there are people that will say, like, yeah, I'll take it. And then when you get it, you realize that's a lot more work than what you planned. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I didn't know what I was getting into with Gracie. So she so she has her so it's not her legs. She still has her legs. Uh she has a spinal injury. Oh so okay. she's paralyzed. Okay. Yeah. Um I did adopt her that way from Egypt. Uh, through an awesome organization called Canada Golden uh, Golden Rescue, Golden Rescue Canada. And so um, they bring dogs over from Cairo and from Turkey. So yeah, I had put in a bunch of applications for like able golden retrievers that I never heard back about. And then uh, Gracie didn't get any applications. And so I heard oh. back from them like right away. And okay. so, so yeah, that's uh that's how I got Gracie. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I never had a disabled pet before. Yeah. I didn't really know what I was getting into. And when she got here, she was in like much rougher condition than they had thought. So um, like her back end was like down to like bone and blood. She had all types of parasites. Like she was basically dead. The vet was like, if you want to put her down today when she got off the plane, like I get it. Uh, but he was amazing. Um, and so he helped me through the whole process and here she is now on her wheels. So, yeah. yeah. So, like, I want to ask you, dealing with that, like, you know, because you said that you were there, like, I guess that was the only application they had. Like, yeah. how do you how do you kind of go through that crossroads? Because I know, like, sometimes when you have, you're looking at a dog and there's three or four in there and you don't know if you're in. And all of a yeah. sudden you get this application. You're like, okay, like, I, I mean, I'm not, hopefully people don't try to cancel me for it. But I mean, like, imagine, like, you're, you're basically looking for a golden retriever. And, you know. Yeah, they come yeah. back to you and they're like, "Hey, you got a golden retriever." You're like, "Great, okay, here's here's like you know the, you know he's a ten, but he does this right." So it's yeah. like, "Yeah, he's a ten, yeah. but yeah. here's the situation." Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. How do you, how was your first reaction? Was it like, "Oh my god, yes, I'll take it," or was it kind of like, "Okay, let me weigh the pros and cons"? Because I don't think anyone would like, you know, begrudge you if you're kind of like, "It sounds great." but I, I want to weigh this through. Cause I don't want, like, again, the worst part is then having a dog and then yeah. you realize like halfway through, you're like, I, I can't help you. And then you're helpless for oh, yourself, for sure. helpless for the dog. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I, um, she, she ended up at getting like two others or something. So they had interviewed us all. Uh, yeah. but when we, when we started the conversation about her coming over, I, I, I was like, Oh, I don't think I don't really know what I'm getting into. And then when I got her, uh, 
yeah, for like the first six months, I was like, I don't know what the f- did. I can't take care of this dog. Like, she was, she's incontinent, so she pee, she'd pee on me all the time, poop on me all the time. So like, yeah, there was plenty of days where I was like, I should have just put her down, not yeah. actually meaning it. Yeah, but yeah. Like, and still days sometimes I'm like, you know, like today I had to give her a bath out there because she has an accident and. Yeah. You know, it's like having a newborn child, except she's 70 pounds and she, she doesn't yeah, speak she, or, yeah, or I don't know, doesn't, yeah, yeah. you know, you yeah, it's, not, it's, not like actually. Not, it's not like she's verbal enough to be like, you know, no. like, thanks, thanks for all this. But like, yeah. okay, while you're doing that, I just want to let you know. Yeah, like, no, but she's so honestly like, so full of love. Like she's the kindest, sweetest, everybody that meets her is like, oh, she's a special dog. So if she was like a and you did all this and you'd be like oh I don't know about this dog but she's so full of love that the other one on the other hand the little guy Henry he's he's barking over there he's got a little bit of an attitude I want to ask you because I noticed this with uh your Instagram as well and like I again when it comes to different interests like uh is it I guess I, I might get this wrong but to me it's like everything that looks like that's the same but it's like yoga or exercising like you're yeah. I guess like you're big into that but like I'm one of those people that for the last maybe four or five years, I okay. will have friends up away and they will say, you should try yoga. You should try this. You should try meditation. You should try it. And I'm like, but why? Like, I don't get it. Like, what's, what's the point? And like, are you trying to say I'm mad? Or are you trying to say like, I need to be calm? And they're like, no, they're, it's just, it's just a good thing to do. I'm just like, man, to me, I get it for people who do it because they seem super easy, super chill. But yeah. to me, I'm just still like, what exactly would I do? What would I start with? And what exactly, like, am I supposed to get an end goal out of it? Because I feel like this is one of those things you have to go in with a mindset of, hey, you got to be positive here, where I'd probably be like, yeah, I'm doing this yoga position. Don't know why. And then someone's just like, <laughs> then don't do it if you don't want to do it. I'd be like, no, it's supposed to be good for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think, oh, are you in St. John's? Yeah. It's like a really good, the, the Moto yoga, yoga studio is really good there. Oh, oh, okay. There you go. Shout out to them. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure now. I'm sure now when this episode gets there, they'll be like, "All right, we like her for this Toby. <laughs> We're gonna drag yeah. you in." That guy. So they'll, they'll like make me. They're like, I, "We heard you like acting. Can you act like you care?" And I'd be like, "I, I can act like commercial where it's just like yoga. So stupid." And then they like convince. <laughs> and there's another person that convinces you all the pros to yoga. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. at the end of the commercial, I'm like, "I guess I could give it a try." <laughs> have you ever have you ever practiced a class have you ever tried one no not at all oh i think you'd like it yeah but okay but okay explain that why why would you think that i like it like explain like what the benefit is and then be like tobin no you're just a loser and that's why you like it because you like bowling so how hard can it be <laughs> <laughs> yeah. bowling and darts are your thing <laughs> yeah, bowling and darts and yeah. yoga on the side where it's like yeah. i go bowl and i can hit my like foot at the back of my head but like man He's so mad that he took his foot and hit him. It's like he practices yoga. Yeah, yeah. No, there's no end. There's no end goal. Like there's no. Um, I mean, it's called a practice for a reason. Like the reason I started practicing was uh, just for my mental health. I think like uh, I, you know, experienced a bit of anxiety or or you know down days, and I did really find that yoga like helped me. Okay. Of course, there's so many times. I mean, that's the thing about it is it's a mental challenge as much as it is a physical challenge. When I'm holding warrior two, I'm fuck this. I wish the teacher would shut up, <laughs> blah, 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 you know? And, oh, like I feel this way. And oh, I'm stu-. like, you hear them, you really become aware of the mental chatter that's constant. Yeah. And through the practice, I mean, the goal for me has been to observe, but also just try to like quiet and not get like meditation, not get attached to the story of like, you know, you're fat or you're stupid or this or that, or if this person had done this, like, that's a great you know, meditation. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just sit but, down there and be like, be like you are fine. And then yeah. like, I'm <laughs> eating a donut. And then there's so like, what kind of meditation yeah. are you doing? You're like, um, hungry. Yeah. <laughs> hungry yeah. person. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, would you mind having a fun game of random questions? No, let's do it. All right. All right. Let me see if this will generate. Okay. Cool. I'm just gonna see what the first one is. Awesome. Okay. What is? Oh, here it is. Like, what is the stupidest or stupidest? What is the stupidest or uh, funniest thing that you remember doing as a child? 
as a child. Yeah, I don't feel like, you know, I feel like an adult, people just be like, well, there's one time I got drunk. Yeah, yeah, funniest or stupidest thing I remember doing as a child. Uh, I don't know if it's the stupidest thing, but like my Barbies had like pretty dramatic lives. Yeah. <laughs> like they had like all types of things going on. <laughs> like, like you want to you want to elaborate on that? No. <laughs> <laughs> like there was like affairs happening, and like you know this girl I was oh. pier- piercing belly buttons and cutting oh. hair, and like my, I don't oh. know my Barbies were like living in a soap opera. I, that's fair. You know what? I feel yeah. like when I was small and watched wrestling, that's what I used to do with wrestlers. Like I keep yep. myself busy and yep. like you, you watch the storylines on TV or how they play out. And then you got figures. I loved the WWF. I used to go to Raw's War when it came to the Sky Dome. I met Shawn Michaels twice. I loved Sunny. Oh. I, I was such a fan. Nice. I, I, I say it because it's just like when you're smaller and you have the figures, like, I mean, everyone has their own interests, but like, I, I it was kind of dorky because it'd be like on a Saturday Bugs Bunny is just after like being on TV and then like you're yeah. planning your day because again yeah. I I might be weird but I'm more organizational and then it's just yeah. so like you sit there and you're yeah. just like all right I'm gonna cry, create my own match card and your friend comes yeah. in and says we're going playing ball hockey you're like not yet I have to yeah. create my own WrestleMania <laughs> here Undertaker and Mankind are fighting yeah yeah, yeah. it's like <laughs> you make a fake page and you just throw it off like yeah we had like a belt well not like a, a real tall balcony but i guess like a uh, high enough that you would like throw rvd doing a frog splash and you're like man that will definitely hit and it just hits grass because it's summertime yeah. and you're like yeah. that's so sick i wish you'd do it in real person <laughs> you're like you just seen that on tv and he would not yeah. do that in real life because he would die <laughs> yeah so what are you thinking you're like oh so sick so cool yeah, yeah. your name your neighbor walks by it's like remember when i had a crush on this guy i'd be like what <laughs> what what was that oh <laughs> what's a hot take you have on life like something that you're like man not a lot of people are going to agree with but i stand by it Ooh. i mean i think i think a lot of me being like adopt don't shop like stop going to breeders pisses a lot of people off especially the breeders of the world so yeah i'm sure yeah i'm sure that's that's yeah. one thing that people are like would she just shut up <laughs> like you just Give it a rest, all right. Like we have Brian yeah. Adams, stop it. Yeah. You're like, yeah. Like, I will contact Brian Adams and make him sing more songs. Don't yeah, make him do exactly. It. Exactly. Uh, I don't know. It, it is a that's a really good random one. I think a hot take that I have is just like, I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit more biased or a little bit more like pet peevish. But okay, like for someone that likes broadcasting, it's like, why is it like every sports station or every well mostly sports station? It's like, hey, we're gonna hire some ex athletes here to mm. do what? It's like to mm. tell you about the sport. I'm like, you didn't do that in like the 70s or 80s. Why all of a sudden is it okay now? It's like, well, they bring insight because they played the game. I'm like, okay, have you he- have you heard their insight? Their insight right. is like, like, yeah, I watched Tom Brady all the time, and I knew he was going to make that touchdown. Like, so does yeah. Keith, and Keith didn't yeah. go to Keith didn't play NFL. Yeah, yeah. No, I I could see why that because you know broadcasting is a skill. People go to school. Like it's a it's a yeah. yeah. So. I, I totally understand where you're coming it's from. It's like when the U.S. It's like I guess it's more of a U.S. phrase, but it's like yeah. you know when you hear a college walk on, like the kid made it. For, like I'm like, yeah, that's great. He's a walk on from college, right? Yeah. Like he had to have some skill to obviously make yeah. it. But then like yeah. for broadcasting, it's like this guy played in the NFL and he walked in, and uh, now he's your co-host for today. I'm like, and there's a twenty-something year old that just spent four years at university, yeah, just trying to get their way in the door. Yeah, and then it's a it's a back and forth because then there are people like yeah, but this guy spent twenty years of his life in the NFL. I'm like yeah, and he's beaten up and bruised, and maybe yeah. he should just go home, go and home relax. and rest, and let yeah. the rest of us come. Yeah, in. <laughs> or if he wants to have a t- if he wants to talk about it, there's podcasting. Yeah. You can't stop him from podcasting. Yeah, but he's already got a name. Like they already have their name made. So yeah. like, you know people yeah. will tune in, but the twenty year old mm-hmm. who just came out of like university or college just trying to. You yeah. know, get a name for himself. They're not going to watch his watch him yeah. comment on Tom Brady's yeah. touchdown on television yeah. network. So yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. my. I can see why that bothers you. Yeah, as a, as mm-hmm. a broadcaster, it does. As like as of a fan, course. you know, I, I, if you're going to be like a little bit unbiased, like listen, if you're going to do it two sides the story, like when Tom Brady retires and Tom Brady wants to go into the booth, I'm not going to be like, ah, tune off Tom Brady. <laughs> Like, no, I'll, yeah. I'll just be as invested, but yeah. I would like to have 
equal say of Tom Brady's on this station. And guess what? Yeah. We gave this like 30 year old guy who's bounced around from different stations. He's going to be his co-host. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. Get the best of both worlds there. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. Just, just mm -hmm. one day you'll go you know, like, you go to a school and be like, uh, how come we don't offer broadcasting anymore? All the sports athletes took it. It's like, yeah, okay. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Like, what else is there to do? Um, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to throw in this bonus one. Cause I thought this one was an interesting one to end it, but, um, uh, what is one thing in life that you would take away, like something that you would hate and it has to go, has to be removed? From my life or like the... And it can be life in general. Like I, I always say things that I want to take out of life is like, I, I know I know the ones will be probably like three that people like don't ever talk about war, religion and blah, blah, blah. But I'm just like, man, if we could just take out a thing that's like, hey, you have to stay off social media for yeah. so many hours a day and see how that affects your life. Like yeah. literally, like if you try to log in, they're like, sorry, not access yeah. at this time. Cause I feel yeah. like gradually people would be like, all right, this is not that important to tweet. This is not important right. to do this. And then eventually you go back to, I, I mean, I'm not saying the nineties was the greatest thing ever, but yeah. if I had an opinion in the nineties, I'm telling a friend and then I'm like, huh, oh, okay, I feel better. Now I have yeah. an opinion. I'm like tweeting it out, and some other ones yeah. like, "I don't like your opinion." It's like, "Well, I don't like your face. I don't like yeah. your face." I'm just like, <laughs> All I said was, "I don't like pineapple on pizza." Yeah, and yeah. People are like, "You're an idiot." I'm like, "All right, you're right. I do like pineapple on pizza. I just want to get engaged." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what would I choose? I could take anything. Well, obviously, I mean, I would take away people cannot engage in animal cruelty. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe like I. Maybe um, you know, people have to have at least one meal without animal product a day. How about that? That's fair. That's yeah, fair. I feel like yeah. that, that'd be tough. I feel for me, yeah. I, I'd probably find like man. I, I think like, it'd be tough for most people. Yeah, I love yeah. like chicken nuggets and pizza. Yeah, and, yeah. But I mean, like, I and burgers. But at the same point, it's like someone's like, you have to take away one. I'm like, who in, who instilled this? Megan? Where's Megan? Yeah. <laughs> breakfast or lunch or dinner the rest of you know is much as you okay. want yeah yeah, yeah. just one meal a day yeah, yeah. yeah. see how yeah you see, you see like a cow on the road like thank you it's like no yeah. don't worry like i saved you thank me now. thank megan <laughs> that's gonna do it for this episode of tobin tonight our thanks to megan hutchings for coming on to the show remember you can find past present and future episodes on tobintonight.com spotify and itunes Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and leave a comment or two. For Tobin and myself, this is Jacob saying thank you for listening and good night.